Well hello everyone, I just wanted to give you a quick update today in this short video. I've been filming in Cyprus recently, this is why I've not been uploading so much, I'm busy at work covering a, a, a small documentary I'm doing on the journey of the Apostle Paul and the archaeological evidence and um, you know what we can deduce from that in Cyprus. And I'm sure most of you saw the, some of the videos I made in Jerusalem over the last couple of months and these interviews I did with the Sanhedrin and uh, of course all the agendas that's going on with the third temple in mind and all of this. Now something that struck me about the beliefs of some of these people involved in the third temple is that this is not black and white. We, we've seen for a long time people in the beginning of the truth movement like David Icke and others, Alex Jones perhaps, that have advocated this common enemy that everything that is part of this agenda is just the Illuminati and the Freemasons basically. That is what the, they've perpetuated for a long time that this common enemy that we all have here is this one group of people who have one particular agenda uh, and that would be like this Illuminati and that's not to say that there aren't groups like that because there are but that is not this is not as black and white as that this whole agenda which we're basically what we're talking about here is the biblical prophecy of this one world system of the Antichrist um, being ahead of it but this is not just coming from one camp. What, what's clear here is that there's multiple facets of different groups that are competing for power, which is, has been re a real lesson for me to learn. That it's not, you know, just that simple. And some of these groups think that they are fighting the other groups for good. That some of these groups think that they, they are creating some kind of a new world but it's a new age world which is a good thing and that, that that needs to happen in order to defeat the darkness of the Freemasons. And this is what we've seen, this um, common thread of this new age versus the new world order. And I think that this is perhaps just a theory, but this is perhaps why the truth movement started off with some of these characters just exposing the... Uh, the New World Order side, because they're actually teaching Theosophy, Alice Bailey, uh, New Age material, as the way out of the quote-unquote evil Illuminati. So this seems to be the subtle thing, and this seems to be one of the biggest deceptions around. So if we can grasp this in our mind, that the Antichrist religion is like a New Age philosophy, Theosophy, that is supposedly going to defeat the darkness of the elite. And this is what we see, this common thread in this symbolism that, and, and these movements, is it's all about defeating the satanic new world order. But it's just the same thing. Again, it's that original thing we said is Lucifer versus Satan, the false light versus the darkness. So this is important to grasp that there's this Hegelian battle but going back to this original point is that some of these people genuine seem to me it seems they are genuine in what they're saying here is that they genuinely think that they are part of <clears throat> a liberation movement to heal the world in a holistic sense and to bring prosperity to to you know I, okay so in this conversations that I've had they will talk about very openly to me about uh, the Freemasons, the Illuminati and how evil they are and that they have this plan to reduce the world population and that it's a bad thing and these people are horrendous very much similar to things that we discuss that we have discussed and that are being exposed left, right and centre you know, against the Jesuits, against the Catholic Church that all of these institutions and Freemasonic stuff are wrong they're bad, they're full of you know, they contain people that have um, ulterior motives and, and secret agendas to reduce the population. All of these things they agree with. But they think that the solution is to bring everybody to the, to the 
understanding of the one true God. You know, many of the, the things sound plausible. They sound like they could correlate with tr the truth movement's beliefs. But what this really is, is, is ecumenical stuff. This is the one world religion. This is the false light. It's the false enlightenment. So this is what we need to be so careful of. This liberation side of the truth movement is actually playing into the same deception of the satanic agenda because it is a uh, false battle between light and dark and uh, biblical prophecy will come true and many will be deceived you know what would be deceptive about an agenda which is clear clearly evil that which looks evil so many will be deceived because it looks right it looks good but it's actually a false unity of the world and a rejection of christ and, and this is the common thread between all of these people is that whether they think they're on the good side or the bad side they all equally reject the lord jesus christ and call anyone who follows jesus christ an idolater so they then they can't be of the truth because they are rejecting the only truth jesus christ the way the truth and the life if they if they're rejecting the way the truth and the life then what they're going to have is confusion um, lies and death darkness because it's empty because the only way they're going to see the truth is if they come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ um, and they don't you know they reject and, and so part of this is the seven Noahide laws this seems to be discussed quite um, you know openly amongst these people that the the Noahide laws is something that's good and, and it, potentially could be something that they would want to implement and one of those Noahide laws uh, talks about blasphemy and it was made very clear to me that anyone who sees Jesus Christ as God as the Lord and as the Savior of the world as the Mashiach the true Messiah anyone who believes Jesus is God would be considered a blasphemer because blasphemy is against the Noahide laws. And I, and I do think, I think it has something to do with the Talmud, the Noahide laws. And it's interesting that we were told as in the days of Noah. Now, I'm not saying that these things are definitely what's going to emerge and happen, but I'm just talking to you as a journalist, as a Christian journalist, that this is, um, these are things that they believe and the things that are perpetuated. Now, there are some people that would try and equate an entire group of people to a certain set of beliefs. I mean, this is only like maybe 10% of people there, you know, so don't get caught in the thinking that this is this is true of everyone. This is, this is you know, select groups of people that want the third temple and they believe these things, but it's not the entirety of the nation. Okay, so these people are very de are deceived, as we were talking about, and you just got to be careful of, of all of this deception at this time. They seem to be interpreting the Mashiach Ben David prophecies from the Bible as the prophecy of this coming Messiah. Um, but you see, it's so close because Jesus will return as the Messiah, Ben David. He will return to set up a kingdom in this world, but they are seeing this before, you know, they, they don't accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. So th their mind is jumping to the idea that this other one is going to be that this side of the millennial reign, that, that he's going to establish the um, the world rule, uh, you know, this Messiah, and, and of course they're being led towards the false one. And this is exactly what they did when Jesus first came. They rejected him because they thought he was coming to set up a physical kingdom on this earth at the time, but he was coming as the suffering servant, as Messiah Ben Yosef, and he was uh, going to pay the price for sin, and that he will return as Mashiach Ben David and, and rule in a, in a millennial kingdom. But they're obviously very confused because they're rejecting Jesus. So they think they're doing the right thing, potentially, a lot of them. 
they think that this is what this the Torah what the scripture is saying they think that they're doing the right thing they're not necessarily trying to do anything wrong but their delusion comes from the rejection of Jesus Christ so we hope and pray that these people will come to know, to know Jesus and that they won't be deceived you know and uh, according to the Bible that there will be a remnant in Israel that comes to faith and salvation so don't wish bad on these people but try and lead them to the truth to evangelize to them the gospel of Jesus Christ and it's clear to me from conversations that some of them do like the Kabbalah you know they, they do think that the Kabbalah is a good thing and it uh, reveals certain mysteries of course this is Gnosticism it's paganism and uh, th this mix is clear in the plans for this temple this mix of um, and that's what's so dangerous you know it's a mix between Eastern philosophy and scripture and and a little bit of this a little bit of that it's a mutated religion and it's full of deception and um, rejection of of God actually I know that in the Bible it, make God, it makes God very angry this mix of deception and truth together just like in the Garden of Eden you know so it's, it's a false religion and one of the quotes was um, which I asked him was what if a Christian refuses to denounce Jesus if he's seen as an idolater uh, for following Jesus what if he refuses to de denounce Jesus in this so-called idealistic new world this new age and he said that that would be for the Mashiach Ben David to decide whatever that means you know they, they seem to think that this figure is going to come and establish the law you know of what what prospers the nations and that all the nations would have to come and um, you know be part of this new system um, and if you don't if nations don't accept that then they won't prosper that seems to be the line of thinking but they you know they think they believe that they've been initiated as the new Sanhedrin in a proper way they, they mentioned something about doing it at Tiberius that the same way that the Sanhedrin did 1600 years ago and that it's, it's been re-established and that part of this temple that there would be a court a Sanhedrin court and that the issues would be governed in this way and I guess you know my guess is is that they think that the Mashiach the Messiah Ben David will come and take his seat as the head of this court and system from the third temple uh, on the Temple Mount don't listen to these people that say that the, the temple was built somewhere else because that is not um, acknowledged by anyone and I do believe that they are going to aim aim for another altar sacrifice type thing at some point uh, possibly this Passover that's a rumor I've heard I don't know exactly but they're definitely going to they seem to have a desire to continue this altar sacrifice uh, ritual stuff until they get as close as possible to the Temple Mount 